All right, hi, again. <laughs> okay, let's see if anyone joins us. Let's see if anyone's on. 14 people so far. Fantastic, hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm back. I'm filling in some time here at the studio and I thought I'd share some of my, my DIY tricks and um, ways that I, you know, create different supports and fill my uh, props with sand and things like that to make them nice and safe. So I wanted to see if you guys were interested. If you've got any questions at all, pop them into the comments. Garrett's here, he's gonna read those out to me. If I look off to the side, I'm just watching the TV here because I can see people's comments come up. Hi, hi, we've got someone from Perth watching us. Good morning, oh well good afternoon. It's actually afternoon time here now. Um, but yeah, I was excited to do this because I know that especially right now, you know, we're all gonna be, um, you know, making sure we're not overspending and things like that uh, with what's happening in the world. We're gonna be, you know, watching all of our dollars. So I thought I'd share some ideas with you on ways that you can create some supports for um, your newborn photography, even sitting babies and things like that, and show you how I do it and what I use. But um, one of the, the biggest questions I get asked all the time is, um, you know, where do I get all of my bits and pieces, all of my, my backdrop blankets for my posing stand, where do I get my wraps from? Uh, and the thing is, I'm always on the look um, out for everything that I could possibly find in any store. Uh, Kmart in Australia is one of my favourite places to go. I'm always finding new and exciting things there that I can use my imagination to create something that's a little different. But the whole purpose behind it is um, I am very tight with my money. I like making money and not necessarily spending it. So I'm always gonna try and find a way to create something that will potentially do ultimately what I need it to do and in the process it saved me a lot of money. So what I was gonna share with you first was um, what I look for when it comes to my backdrops and my, my posing bag blankets. And this one here was from Kmart. It cost me $12, 12 Australian dollars. And it's literally just a throw blanket. Now. Things like this, when you overwash them, they do start to pill over time. You can use, um, obviously, different types of fabric, um, uh, what do they call them, fabric razors to remove pilling and things like that. It can be a bit of a problem, but I think for me, the way that I'm always sort of introducing new things is that once this is, you know, seen its lifetime, I just replace it with something else. So that's why I'm always looking for new things and it keeps me a little bit more excited as well um, when I get some new stuff to bring it into the studio. But yeah, I'd probably get about, I reckon about 20 washes out of this and I always wash them on a very gentle um, cycle on the hand wash cycle in my machine and I use wool wash, um, sensitive skin wool wash when I am washing all of my sort of fluffy soft woolly blankets like this one. A couple of my other fabrics that I do use, um, actually Garrett can I get you to just pass me um, one of the the fabric ones that um, that's hanging up there just next to the brown one that yeah that one perfect. This is like a t-shirt material. Oh, I should have got this out earlier. And it's literally three meters of fabric from a fabric store that I went in and got. But what I love about it is that I could use both sides if I wanted to, um, but it is nice and soft and it's got a stretch in it as well. So when I'm looking for background fabric, I wanna make sure that it's got a little bit of stretch in it so I can pull it nice and tight so I don't have any wrinkles or, or lines or creases in my blankets in my background, which saves me a lot of time in post-production. And often what I'll do is I'll take a little trim um, of the corner of a lot of those fabrics when I'm looking for other things, even my wraps. I'll often take some of those with me if I know I'm going to a fabric store so I can try and match up those colors as, as, you know, as best that I can because sometimes it is hard to try and find you know, all of the, um, the perfect colors in our fabrics and wraps. All right. I wanted to show you next a couple of other things that I've been using for many years. I've probably had these for about 10 years, do you reckon? Yeah, I re yeah maybe. I right. I've had these for so long. Anyway, I found this material. It is like a tube, so like a stocking type thing. And it's just a tube. And I found it at like a shop called Reverse Garbage. So it's where they basically take, you know, lots of 
I suppose trash, somebody else's trash is someone's treasure, you know, yeah. they turn it into something. And uh, I bought, I think, a few metres of this on a roll and then I literally just filled it with polystyrene. So when I'm doing the potato sack, I can put that down on my posing bag. I can fill large props with this, baskets, uh, anything, and I can, I can place the baby in there. If you're working with um, digital backgrounds and you often need a space to be able to photograph the baby on, on its back, for example, I will grab my outer layer, push that down, and then I've got the perfect space to be able to photograph that baby to be able to um, put it onto uh, you know, a variety of different digitals as well. So I'm always looking for different, um, different things like that that are going to increase the, um, the variety, variety in my galleries and it's going to help speed up your workflow too. So I have one that's in a round shape and then I have another that's just in a long shape. And what I use this one for on my posing bag is when I'm doing siblings and um, I have them lay down to hold the baby. To bring their chin forward to get that connection, I'll often pop this underneath the back of their head. It's nice and soft. I can double it over if I want to, to give me a bit of extra height, but it does create a perfect support. Um, and I can also put that into the bottom of props and things like that as well to make them nice and full. And they're really lightweight. Um, I always use my towels. You guys have seen me use my towels over and over again. Um, and I find when I am posing babies with these that if a baby moves as you're positioning them, you can use the towels and fold them over and just readjust them underneath the baby to help support it and keep it in position um, as they are sort of having a little bit of a wriggle and a move. I find, you know, with often big things like this, it is very hard to kind of get it back in that perfect position. Whereas with my towels, you know, I'll slide that in underneath um, the, the blankets on the posing bag. And then as the baby's um, going into position, I'll sort of fold the towels over if I need to, use corners, say for example if the baby's head is here, um, then I can, I can curl both corners over and it's going to help keep that baby's head exactly where I want it. So these have always worked brilliantly for me and they're great to have on hand for any little accidents as well. Um, what else? Yesterday, if you joined me, I shared my foam and we had a photographer share this in the group a while ago and it was I was like oh my god that is a brilliant idea so Lizzie if you're watching or you do watch this thank you for sharing that into the group because this has seriously become a game changer for me it is a mattress topper um, and it's obviously nice and wrinkly on one side but it's also smooth on the other side so when I put this down on top of my posing bag like this, the fabric attaches to it, it sticks to it, it doesn't move. And then as I'm positioning my supports in underneath, um, you know, it lifts it up, but it creates that smooth surface which I'm looking for. I've got mine cut into the shape of a circle because of the posing bag that I use, my Paloma shell, and I attach this to the frame. And, I, and as, as you can see, it has that little bit of stretch in it. So when you place the baby down, it's got that sort of added support around the baby, which is absolutely perfect and what I'm always looking for. So that cost me, that's a double bed size, and that was about 12 Australian dollars, honestly. It seems to be my lucky number. Um, but yeah, it has been perfect. And to wash it just in the bathtub, again, with some wool wash, if you have one of those, um, those hosey things you can put on the end of your tap, it's perfect for rinsing it out as well and just pop it out into the sun to dry. It doesn't take long at all. The, um, the next thing I was gonna show you, and we'll move these along, is I've got some door stops. <laughs> when we looked these up to find out what the correct name is, they're called a draft stopper. <laughs> um, and these are $4. So you can, they're filled with some type of sandy grain, like a grit in there um, to make it nice and heavy. And then they've got some foam in there as well. So they are soft at the same time. But if you curl them around, these are perfect to go into the bottom of your buckets. And I've got one here. So you can add a weight, and you can see that down in there. 
you can add that as a weight and you could potentially put um, a couple more on there as well if you had a, a larger prop that you needed to fill that space. But it's going to um, add the weight that you need to make that nice and stable. And they're just, you know, they're just easy, but they were $4 each. You could place those, you could tie them like this together. You could place that underneath your posing um, bag blankets and there you create an instant well and some support if you're putting the baby on its back, um, for example, or even into the bum up pose. These work brilliantly. The other thing that I often use is um, just socks. And I've got two here. It was a, a pack of two tube socks for $3. And I filled one with rice, mixed it with a little bit of bicarb soda so that keeps the moisture out. And, um, and then I just put the one sock inside the other to make it nice and thick. And you've got a nice heavy support. It's not gonna go anywhere, but that underneath your posing blankets is gonna work beautifully or again inside um, some of your props. And that's just, I think that's about half a kilo of rice. I bought one kilo bag of rice and that's about 500 grams of rice in there. So that works beautifully. Um, but with things like that, whenever you put any food products into um, items that you're gonna use in your studio, keep an eye on them. Obviously you don't want them to be you know, um, getting any moisture or becoming mouldy or anything like that. You want to keep it nice and clean. And that's why that bicarb soda, soda works beautifully. But another thing I was going to show you is some Ziploc bags and some sand. So I've got, we use a lot of sandbags here and we use them on our light stands. Um, and they're the ones that the saddlebag style that go over the legs of the um, the light stands to keep them nice and stable, especially when we've got kids in the studio, toddlers running around, you always want to make sure that everything is nice and secure and stable. We, when we have leads out on the ground, we always tape those down as well. So duct tape is going to be your friend there, but you're better off taping everything down and making sure it's all weighted because if something happens throughout a shoot, if something gets knocked over, someone could be injured, um, your equipment could be damaged, you want to make sure that you are, you know, adding all of those necessary precautions in place because, um, what was that saying my mum used to always say, you know? Yeah, that one. Oh, it'll come to me when I least expect it. But anyway, when you're working with buckets, it's very hard to put those saddlebag sandbags in here, that canvas. They're quite stiff and light. We can't hear you. Here we go, we should be back. Can you hear me now? Okay, I'll just grab another microphone just in case. All right. Just bear with us. Something happened to the sound. We're, we're coming back, we're getting it, we're getting it sorted. Oi, oi, oi. Any lip breath. readers in here? <laughs> <laughs> I'll grab some we'll Hang on, hang on two seconds, wait two seconds. Yes, you are back. Someone said I'm back. Now can. All right, sorry about that. One moment, we'll go up again. Hear you now. There we are. Okay, fantastic. All right, where did we lose sound? What was I talking about? Someone needs to tell me where, where so if I need to go back. Where were we back to? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, that must be Michelle, is it? Telling she's oh, told Rob to yeah. go down. That's okay, too so funny. Just, um, basically, just go over the um, the sand when you put the sand into the, the pot. Ah, all right. So if you missed the part where I was talking about putting sand into the bottom of the um, Okay, I am back. Fantastic. I'm looking at the comments that are coming through to make sure everyone can hear me. All right, so I've got that sand in the bottom. It's going to make it nice and stable and secure, and that's exactly what we want to do. But the perfect thing about putting sand into bags like this is, is that you can easily mould it to the shape of your prop, especially a bucket like this. Um, and that's going to, to work really well for you. Um, I must have, I, I might have already, I think actually what they missed was how long I've had this bucket and where I found it, maybe. Yes. on the side. I found it on the side of the road, it was free. Um, but to protect a baby when they are in here because of these, you know, metal um, sides where the handle is attached, when I am positioning the baby in here, I roll my towels over. This is the easiest way for me to do it. And I'll just grab a wrap. And once I've got all the inside of my prop lined, I will grab one of my wraps and I'll pull it around the edge there. And then I will secure one of my towels on top like this. And then I curl the fabric over the top so that it makes a nice firm support there for the baby to rest on and that way they're not coming into contact with the metal edges of the bucket and I am protecting them from those hard sharp sides there and um, and that keeps it nice and comfortable for the baby at all times. So as I'm, I'm layering that prop on the inside to create that shelf to create the support I, um, I then get to the top and I use another towel and I um, wrap a piece of fabric around it to make it nice and, and safe. Alrighty. Okay, so the next thing I, um, I'm going to show you is my furs and I often find these in homeware stores um, and they're just cushion covers. This one I think was about $30 and I know that this Angora wool um, is quite expensive to buy. So when I am trying to save money on different things like that, I, I look, look for sales all the time. So I just pull the cushion out and then I've got my beautiful fur that's going to line my, my props and my bowls and things like that. But then I also have an extra, um, extra support that I can put into larger props when I need to fill them if I don't want the baby right down deep inside them. So these are always really great to have on hand as well. Um, another thing you can do with cushions is you can make them nice and small. You can pop some rubber bands and things like that around them um, and then they become a smaller, more firmer support as well. And one thing that I do use, and I was going to show you this, we got any questions? We do. When I stack the towels in the bucket, they keep falling down. Any tips to avoid that? Ah, all right. Well, we'll grab, in a minute, I'm going to grab some more towels and I'll show you how I do line the inside of my prop. But I'll show you a couple more tricks with things like this. This little pillow, I think, was about $3 from Ikea. So in the baby section in Ikea. And what I do is, Garrett's going to have a little laugh here. You'll probably laugh at me as well as I struggle. But it's just filled with foam and you can go and get your, you know, your own bag of wadding from, um, I mean, in Australia I go to Spotlight, but if you go to any sort of uh, hobby or craft or sewing shop where you can um, find bits and pieces, but if you roll that up really nice and firm, socks, tube socks like this are great. because they're nice and stretchy. Get it in there. These are fantastic for creating the little pillow supports that you know we often use um, on the posing bag. Look at that, three bucks. How good's that? And it's nice and firm now, and it's the perfect sort of shape and height to place in underneath a baby and it's going to save you a lot, a lot of money. You could, to make it even nice, you could put it in another sock entirely up to you. Um, 
The other thing that I've always got on hand are some zip ties, things like that, to help sort of secure different things. Um, if you wanted to, you know, you could have put some zip ties around there, but you do need to be careful that when you cut off, obviously, the edge of the zip tie and you've got that little hard button there, that's obviously not going to come into contact and the baby's not going to feel it. I've already mentioned my gaff tape, which works beautifully. Um, and I'm kind of done with all of my other little hacks. So, Garrett, can I get you to pass me some towels? Yeah. And I'll show you how I do line my, my bucket. What else have we got? We've got questions. How big is that pillow? Is this the little blue one you're referring to? Um, well, as big as my hand? <laughs> I don't know the exact measurement, but they are literally, um, they're just little toddler pillows. So if you go into Kmart, I mean not Kmart, if you go into Ikea and you go to the, the baby section, or if you just jump onto the Ikea website, that cost me three Australian dollars and it's just foam. But if you go into um, a, a hobby store, a craft store, a sewing shop, anything like that where you can buy um, you know, materials and fabrics, you're going to be able to buy bags of wadding, just a clear bag of wadding. And then if you get a sock, you just fill, fill your socks as much as you can. And then all I do is tie a knot and if I need to, I just trim it. And now I've got the perfect support, um, you know, to go into under the blankets. Ones. These cushions here, well... The cushion covers. Let's have a little look here. About 30, 40 centimetres on the inside? Yeah, so I'm going to say that's about 30 to 40 centimetres square. So it's just a normal cushion for the couch. Um, yeah, and the thing is, if actually I'm going to be a real pain, yeah. can you pass me my wooden bowl? And this is my most used prop. Um, I don't often have to fill this with anything because it is very heavy. So a baby's obviously not going to go anywhere. But let's just say, for example, we're going to line it with... Now we've got the perfect support for the baby to come in here on its back. And then if I'm going to use one of my cushion covers, I'll push that down the middle in the well there. And then I can place the baby, baby down in there. So it fits my props perfectly. And this, like I said, is my, my most used prop. Um, on my blog on newbornposing.com, I actually have got a blog post on there about my props. Um, but yeah, what I'm often doing is when I'm looking for... Um, or looking at different things that I could potentially use as props or if I'm going to make a prop, I use my arm as a guide. Um, I pretty much go from my elbow to my fist and if I can place that inside a prop or a basket or a bowl, then I'm guessing that that's going to be a pretty, um, pretty good size really. Any smaller than that and I wouldn't be able to fit a baby and especially a big baby. That's so, um, Cindy asked that exact question. She always struggles with what size yeah. to get her props, and that's the rule of thumb. Yeah, so if I can put my arm in here, it's a great size. And when I am positioning the baby in here, um, and can you pass me Crystal? <laughs> Poor Garrett, I'm making him work today. Um, well, this is how we have fun. I fix the camera, so we can't move the camera, so I have to come to you. Alrighty. Okay, so if I am positioning a baby in here, now if I put the bum in the middle of the prop, then the head's going to come to the side. So my rule of thumb when I am posing a baby and positioning them in here is that I line their little belly button up the middle of their back with the centre of that prop, and um, and then that way I can get them nice and nice and curly in here. But she is roughly the same size as a newborn baby in terms of length and and body size. So this for me would be a great a great prop. And if you have a look, when I hold a baby as well, when they're all curled up, and most parents can do this, most adults can do this, you can put the baby, you know, um, from its bottom, and you can curl your hand around the top of its head, that's going to be the average size of a newborn. So that's why I use my arm um, when I'm sort of estimating whether or not they would be a good size for props. We've got 287 people watching <laughs> today. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, Michelle's just put a link in there for newborn props. 
Fantastic. That's just a blog a blog post. So I talk about my, my different st sizes of props and, and what I look for. But yeah, um, I saw someone say that they just chimed in. Um, you know, it's just a sock with a little cushion in it, a little pillow that I got from Ikea, and it's a toddler size, so very small. And I just squished it up to make it nice and firm and it becomes a perfect support. So now what we're going to do is line one of our buckets. What have we got here? We've got a bag of sand. And if you wanted to, if you've got a hot glue gun, if you wanted to make this more sort of permanent, you can, um, you know, just put a little bit of hot glue all the way along the inside or use some duct tape and tape that over as well to make it nice and secure and neat. But what I tend to do is once I've got all of my props sort of set up and, and already lined, I put them back onto my shelf so that during a session, I don't have to get them out and start from the scratch. I've always got, um, got them ready to go. And they've already got their weights on them. But you can go and buy sand, bags of sand. If you live near a beach, obviously it's gonna be free. So I'll just pop that in the bottom as my weight. And when I am looking at how much weight I want to put into a prop, Obviously, whenever I'm using something like this and a baby's going to be upright in it, there's always going to be a spotter next to that bucket and there's always going to be a hand right above. So in case that baby moves at any point in time, there's always going to be somebody right there, which is really important. But if, I, if I'm going to sort of estimate roughly the weight that I'm putting into the bottom of these um, buckets and things like that, the average weight of a baby is around three kilos. So what's that, about seven and a half ounces? Um, don't quote me on that. But um, I'm probably going to look for about the same sort of weight that I'm going to pop into the bottom of my, my props. All right, so the reason I love my towels, and you can see directly above there, which is fantastic. So I roll these, and I roll them nice and firm and tight. And like I said, once I've done this and I've got them set up, there's no need for me to come back and, um, and take it all out and redo it. Because what I do is I then use my wraps and things like that to place over the top of it so the baby's not coming into contact with any of the supports that are currently inside any of my props. All right. So I create this shelf and I just roll and pull nice and firm. But yeah, I love crafting, so I'm always kind of looking at ways that I can um, make different things. When I am lining my props like this though, it's always better to have more support in here when you put the baby in because you can just sort of, you know, just lift the weight of the baby up ever so slightly and pull out any additional weights that you don't need or supports um, underneath the baby to create more space. But if you didn't have enough support in there to start with, then a baby is going to, um, you know, be down inside and it's going to be very hard to, to put more support in underneath them without having to pull them out of the prop. And when we think about overhandling babies, we don't want to be continually sort of, you know, um, picking them up and putting them down and overhandling them. My magnet and my watch is attaching to the bucket every time. This one's got a stain on it. Oh, three kilos is 6.6 .6 pounds. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, it's around the average size of a baby, you know, that sort of seven pounds-ish. All right, so you can see inside there how that's kind of creating that support. And I'll pop a baby in there in a second. But what I do is, even though babies aren't generally that heavy, obviously, um, the weight of them is going to push those towels down, which is why I kind of roll them as, um, as firm as I possibly can. There are lots of different supports out there that you can buy, but I find that these are the cheapest um, and the most versatile supports you can use. All right. So that's where I would stop with that one, and then I would bring my wrap in 
tall does the bucket need to be for the upright pose? Well, I'm sort of looking here at this one and if I use my elbow again and we're going to tuck those little legs out up, if you look from the wrist to the elbow, I'm guessing a bucket that size and I've been using this one since I can remember, um, that's probably going to be a really great size for you to start with. Totally off topic, but I want to tell you your one wrap workflow tutorial is the bomb. Ah, thank you. Yes, it makes everything so easily. Oh, it's so easy. I'm trying to read some more, more comments there. Alrighty, so. Once yeah, where do you get those towels from? Um, well, these are just uh, cloth, what we call cloth nappies. So <laughs> everyone laughs when I say nappy. And um, they're cloth diapers. So they're just a square, and I'll show you. And I can buy a packet of these. I think they come in packs of 12 at Kmart, and I think they're around $20 for a packet of 12. So over the years, I have bought so many, and every now and then when I see them on sale, I go and get more because, you know, this one here's got a stain after I tried to dye my own cheesecloth um, brown, and then Robert helped me with the washing one day. Um, <laughs> it was wonderful, made some of my wraps a little little yucky in colour, so I don't tend to use those because parents might look at that and associate that colour with something else. All right, so then I bring this one on the top, like so, and bring my fabric around. So if my props are sitting on my shelf, um, waiting to be used, they look like that. And then that's where I get a fresh one for the, where I'm going to position the, um, the fabric, whatever color I'm using. And then I have a look at the size of the baby and determine if I need to put any additional supports down the bottom to fill it. So if we're looking at this little one here, and we're gonna tuck her little legs up. So when I place her down inside here, there's obviously going to be enough room for her little legs and things like that. And just bring her face up onto the prop. I can't see the front. <laughs> I'm just totally going blinded Crystal here. Crystal is being cooperative today. There we go. And then what I do with the end over here is I usually tuck this in. Um, again, they're not going to come into contact with that little metal thing. And I use the end of the fabric just to kind of drape around the back of the baby. But, and then come down to the floor. So it's created that, that nice sort of support and you can have it a little, a little lower there if you wanted to, pushing it down inside, but you just have to make sure that they don't come into contact with any of those hard surfaces. Um, if it's like a wood, it could potentially have splinters or anything like that on it, depending on the, the surface of it. Um, with metal buckets, have, they could potentially have little sharp edges, so you've got to be careful of those as well. Um, a little off topic from Julie, um, do you choose your props for the session or do your clients choose them? Uh, so this is where I actually get my clients involved in the shoot. I always want to create photographs that they love. People are very polite when they come in and they won't often speak up. So. Not all of them, you know, come in and know exactly what it is that they want, but they will also keep their mouth closed if you're doing something and they don't like to be polite. So I try to get as much information from them as possible. I ask them if there's anything that they've seen, um, anything that they love, you know, from my website, uh, my Instagram page, my Facebook page. And I'll often tell them to take a couple of screenshots um, of photos that they love to, to bring along and show me um, at the beginning of the session. I don't do any pre-planning in that sense with my clients because I know that every time they come in here, if they're coming for the very first time, they're gonna see all of my props on the shelves and it's human nature for us to, um, you know, to see something and you know, instantly want it when we fall in love with it. So if they do pre-plan, they're still gonna come in and see something else that they may not have seen before. And that's when I like to ask, you know, all those important questions of, you know, what colors are we going to use today? What sort of colors do you have in your home? Um, especially when it comes to creating beautiful wall art for them, because I want those photos to go on the wall and stay on the wall, and I want it to match their decor. Uh, not everyone is, you know, um, 
into you know their home decor as as you know a lot of people are but um, it is really important when I'm selling framed prints that they are going to look good on the wall if someone has a white home and everything is bright and white um, and I create something that's very dark and moody it's probably not going to to match the rest of their decor so I try to get as much information as possible to create photographs that are going to work and they're going to anyone else lose sound again no, okay no, okay no, great no, no. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So yeah, um, you know, and, and asking them if there's anything that they've seen of mine, obviously when they get their, their um, phone, I don't have mine handy here, but when they have their phone, and you, this may have happened to you before, if they show you a heap of photos that aren't necessarily yours, don't be offended, just ask them, um, what is it that you love about that photograph? Is it the colour, the prop or the pose? and then you can then start to communicate with them and ask more questions as to what it is that they want and you know then that you've involved them in the process and they're gonna love every single photo that you take. And that's how you get that final sale, by asking, listening, and then producing um, to their expectations. So yeah. Nice. Um, Michelle's just put a link in there for your upright and prop because it's kind of turned into a prop tutorial, hasn't it? Well, it kind of did. <laughs> People are loving though that you're sharing so much information. They're all finding it invaluable they're so grateful that you just give this away all the time but i think this is what it's all about so absolutely and you know what it's um i think you know when you are learning you're really only going to you know tune in and resonate with what it is that you need to learn at that point in time so yeah um think about how you can save some money and create different things for your studio when you are um, obviously you're looking for different supports and ways to help position and pose the baby but one of my favorites is little things like this um, you know tubes where you can put some some polystyrene beans inside them socks filled with rice these work beautifully um, just to sort of place around the baby and yeah you can you can have fun with it but I can't emphasize enough how important it is to think about any potential dangers when you are making and using things. Think about um, how you can create a safer environment with everything that you do and use in your studio. So yeah. All right. We got any more questions? Um, what do you recommend for prop flooring under the prop? Um, as in a background? Yeah, so uh, background flooring. Do you know, I have some beautiful fake um, timber background flooring from Intuition Backgrounds by Becky Gregory. They're my favorite. I have a light colored one and a dark colored one. And then I also have some canvas material um, that I've just painted myself. So I'll often sort of paint, um, you know, uh, like more sort of brownie neutral tones. I'll have a look at the, the, the main colors that I tend to use in my studio and I'll, I'll find some tones and mix and match those. But what I love doing when I paint my own textures is, I'm sorry, my own backgrounds is creating, you know, some cool textures. And I'll use mops, old mops, I'll use brooms, the brushes off dustpan and brushes. I'll even grab some cloths like this and put them in different colors and then dab them all over the canvas. So you can have um, a lot of fun creating different textures and um. looks. How do people stay up to date with when you're going live? Well, I'm not really consistent at the moment, am I? <laughs> one, thing, one thing I can recommend, and I'm not sure if people can fully hear me, so you might need to repeat it, but um, making sure notifications are turned on for the group. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to be doing this more often. I'm actually going to be live again tomorrow. What day is it today? Thursday? Sure. So tomorrow, we're actually doing a live image critique. So this afternoon in about, what time is it now? One o'clock at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. I am going to put a link into the group um, for people to submit their photos. So you've got three hours from now to pick a photo if you want to get that uploaded. Now, it usually only takes a couple of minutes for all 20 photos to come through. I critique the first 20 that are submitted. Um, and it is one image per person. Make sure there are no watermarks, no logos. The file needs to be around um, two megabytes in size. Save it as an sRGB in the sRGB color space. 
And when I share that link at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time in three hours time, um, the first 20 photos will be accepted through. So keep an eye out for that in, in a few hours time. And then tomorrow morning, it'll be at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. I'll go live to do the image critique right here in the group. If you can't join me, don't worry. They always stay here in the group, the videos. We always keep them. And um, if you want, if you're a big user on YouTube, head over to YouTube. I've got lots of previous critiques on there as well. But again, you can just use the search bar here in the group and look for all of those. But I will try and be a little bit more consistent with um, getting online for my lives at the same time, but it'll roughly be around that 10.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time that I will go live because it gives us enough time to get into the office, get set up. I mean, if you could see Garrett set up here, he's got lights, he's got a camera up here, he's got a camera over there, he's got microphones, I've got a TV over there and I can see all your beautiful comments. and. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not just a quick, you know, turn the phone on and let's go live. There's a little bit more involved with that. And we always want to make sure that we are sharing, you know, valuable information with you guys because, um, you know, I love, I love sharing. I love seeing you share your work and I love seeing the improvement and how far so many of you have come in such a short period of time. Um, you know, I always find it a little funny and amusing when I look back at my, my older work on Flickr and when I see, you know, how long it took me to actually see progress and improvement, um, it took a lot longer than what it does for you guys today. So, because there weren't tutorials and not everyone wanted to share their information either. So, yeah, but um, I don't think I've got anything else. Keep an eye out for that link. The live critique again will be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Have a look at the date and time website and you can, um, I'll share a link anyway with all of that information too. But yeah. Awesome. We're going to go. I'm going to do some work. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? It's lunchtime. <laughs> All right. Uh, please take care. Stay safe. Don't put yourself into any um, vulnerable situations. Um, but yeah, look after yourselves and your family and start thinking about ways you can save money and create some new little bits and pieces for your studio to make your life easy. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.